It's a conspiracy between the governments and the large corporations, and you're just the drive-by media. <laughs> Well, friends, it has happened. I have been forced, even though I'm sick, to make a video about how stupid people are in the comments. Oh boy, and you can already see the video. It's about, can the plane take off? Nope. Mythbusters, the airplane conveyor belt question. Oh my god, these people. These people, as one of them liked to put it towards me, these people are a masterclass in the Dunning-Kruger effect. For those who do not know, the Dunning-Kruger effect is where someone who doesn't really know anything about a situation, they're not very skilled, evaluates their level of knowledge or their skill far more highly than they actually should. They uh, think that they know everything, but it's only because they have the most basic understanding. Now, while I am not some sort of aerospace engineer like everybody on the internet seems to be, I am someone who did take aerospace courses in high school. I have flown an airplane, a small single-engine airplane. Not COVID, sorry to disappoint you, uh, people who are about to get butt-slammed in my comment section. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to die of COVID, so you're still going to get bent over without lube on these. Even Mythbusters got the airplane conveyor belt question wrong. Now, my video goes over in detail why the uh, internet question about the conveyor belt and the airplane and so on. And the most common objection, by far, from all these brilliant people has been the plane would take off because the engines pull on the air and the air is not the ground. So it would it would take off because, because the thrust happens against the air. It's not trying to push itself forward using the tires pushing it for it's trying to push itself forward with jet engines and they pull on the air that's not how it works you don't understand the question and part of the problem as you will see is that the question's bad uh, it's a hypothetical that can't exist in the real world people who analyze it and try to apply it to real world scenarios can see that in the real world the plane would clearly take off in a real world anything, assuming you could even have this gigantic conveyor belt with no middle supports that could hold an entire 747 jumbo jet that could do the thing where it matches the speed of the wheels exactly bit for bit with no changes in between. In the real world, it's not possible, but in a hypothetical where these perfect conditions exist, which is what the question is actually asking. You have to read these questions as written, not as you decide that they should be, not as you've modified them to apply to real world scenarios that have errors and delays and where a conveyor belt that exactly matches the speed of the wheels isn't technically even possible. But in the hypothetical, if the conveyor belt did match the speed of the rotating wheels, the plane in the real world would still take off because at some point, something will be imperfect. At some point, there will be a delay between the pull that there's no way for the match to happen, period. But in the hypothetical, we're saying that it can anyway. We're ignoring the fact that in the real world, that's not possible because the constraint, and this is the number one thing in the entire thing that these brilliant genius ass aerospace engineer wannabe people that are in the comments belittling me and putting down votes on this, this is what they don't get. They can't read. They don't read specifics in the original question. The constraint that prevents the plane from taking off is that the tires cannot rotate at a higher speed than the conveyor belt. It doesn't matter if the tires are not being used to do the pushing. They're a single unit and here's the real world outside of it, the airplane is not moving forward relative to the conveyor belt. So if the conveyor belt plane combo is stationary, it can't move forward. It physically cannot go forward. Now, why am I constantly talking about going forward? Because the way that a plane achieves liftoff, the way that any big airplane like this gets off the ground is that the jet engines push the plane forward and the forward motion causes air to go over the wings 
and the air going over the wings causes lift. There is no other source of lift. If the conveyor belt and the wheels must be perfectly matched, again, not possible in the real world, but if they are to be perfectly matched in speed, that means that the plane can't move relative to the conveyor belt. And one of the things I talked about in the video is how the plane could move relative to the world outside of the conveyor belt. For example, say this impossible conveyor belt was on an even more impossible gigantic truck that was going 60 miles an hour. That's going to cause a 60 mile an hour wind to go over the wings and lift the plane off. If there's a nice strong gust of wind, let's say there's a hurricane force wind came along and this stationary plane conveyor belt combo gets hit with a hurricane gust forced of wind, just 100 miles an hour, 120 miles an hour, it's going to start picking the thing up a bit. It's probably not enough to, you know, just by itself, it's probably not going to be sustained enough to lift the jet off. But in theory, enough wind just randomly hitting the wings will lift the tires off of the conveyor belt. The constraint requires that the airplane's tires match the speed of the conveyor belt. It doesn't require that the tires be attached to the conveyor belt. Once the airplane is off the ground, the speed of the conveyor belt and the tires don't matter as they're no longer together. So if the tires on the plane go the same speed as the conveyor belt, then the plane's not attached to it anymore. And someone tried to use an analogy for that. So I think we should go ahead and get into the comments so I can get deep in this and, and make people even more butt mad than they already are. Um, I also probably should check and see if this one guy, I don't know if, uh, let's see what happened. Oh, look at that. I think he deleted his comment. Nope, he didn't. Nope, but we're probably going to ban him live on air here. So, let's go to the oldest one. Glad you posted this video. You get a heart, my dude. A prop plane doesn't fly because of it pushing wind over the wings. And I go on to explain that a prop plane doesn't. No, that's not how it gets up, but I was trying to find any possible way to get the air to go over those wings. And a prop plane does push air backwards. That does provide some lift. Nowhere near enough to take it off. But if we're talking about a system where theoretically everything can just approach infinity, the prop can theoretically approach infinity in speed. Therefore, um, sorry about the coffee, by the way. My voice might be better now. Therefore, if the propeller can go fast enough, it can push enough wind back to cause lift off. Once the plane's off the conveyor belt, the constraint no longer locks the plane in place and it can go just do whatever it wants because the wheels and conveyor are no longer touching. I don't want to read all of this because that's really all there is to it. Um, your plane is real. Both planes create lift using airflow hitting their wings. This same thing I've hashed over a thousand times. 100% agree, a plane cannot fly without high and low pressure on the wings. <clears throat> this guy knows how an airfoil works. What a shock. The aerospace engineer, as you'll soon find out, bowed out and ran away like a little pussy. The problem we have, as you stated, is the experiment is flawed. Yep. Any real-world experiment can't actually meet the constraints in the problem presented. Uh, the problem is people get hung up on all the variables that make the experiment difficult to do properly, resulting in the actual question never being answered. Yep, let's see. See, I tried to expand the replies, but refreshing them screwed it up. Let me ask you this. If I were a swimmer and I could swim across the pool through the water in 30 seconds, and then you put a conveyor belt at the bottom of the pool going the opposite direction at the same speed, do you think it would affect my swimming? This is a terrible analogy and illustrates exactly how the person does not understand what, they're, what is being discussed. Well, if you're swimming and there's a conveyor belt at the bottom of the pool, well, is there a constraint that your feet must move at the same speed as the conveyor belt? I mean, it, it doesn't even work because feet aren't wheels, right? That, that just doesn't make any sense at all. The problem that a lot of these people, like this guy has is getting hung up with <clears throat> is that they think that somehow the method by which the plane would go forward has anything to do with anything. The constraint requires that the plane doesn't go forward because the wheels are attached to the conveyor belt and they match speeds perfectly somehow magically. It doesn't matter what's pushing. The conveyor belt 
constraint requires that it can't go forward. Even no matter how hard it pushes. The, the idea behind this is that the conveyor belt goes a certain speed. The wheels go a certain speed in the opposite direction. And that is the thing that is locked together. So if you manage to make it go forward, you violated that constraint that's in the original question. That's the whole thing. This whole argument, that's what it ultimately hangs up on, is that there is a constraint, which is not a realistic constraint, but if you consider it to be one and that a perfect hypothetical world could exist where it could be done, that constraint requires that the plane stay in the same place in three-dimensional space. It's not allowed to go forward. If it has more thrust than is necessary, uh, so it can break free of the conveyor belt, so it can move forward, the tires are spinning faster than the belt. It has violated the constraint. And every single comment that I leave, you'll see me say something like, violated the constraint, because this is not a question about aerospace. In the end, it's not a question about airplanes. It really has nothing to do with how a plane is engineered. The only things you need to understand to understand this question are a very careful reading of the question, how a plane could detach its tires from the conveyor belt without the speed of the tires versus the conveyor belt mattering because as long as they're together in any way, those things are tied together, it can't lift off because they're required to match. Once the airplane is in the air, it doesn't matter what speed the tires go, they've now been taken from the conveyor belt, they are no longer in contact, there is no force acting between them anymore, ergo if the tires spin the same speed as the conveyor belt, woohoo! Excuse me while I whip this out. Damn. I'm ill, yo. I'm so ill. It sucks. <coughs> mm. I'm gonna sanitize. Look, see this? This is this is how I clean these comments. Oh, I gotta wash the comments off my hands. Oh god. I'll get even sicker if I don't. Oh, oh, sanitize me. Oh, comment cleanse me, Daddy. Oh, okay. Alright, I feel less ridiculous now. So the pool thing just doesn't make any sense. It, it's a non sequitur. Now this guy lacks 770. This is what I think about you, bro. Because you're combative and you're wrong and you said a bunch of mean stuff and I'm going to throw it right back up your butt. <coughs> the ground is irrelevant. No, yeah. The design of the conveyor belt is irrelevant. Mm -mm, the stupid hypotheticals are irrelevant. The question is a hypothetical question. The question, by the constraints expressed in it, can't exist in the real world anyway. It is a purely hypothetical question. Ergo, the stupid hypotheticals are all that's relevant. You just can't read properly. The conveyor belt is relevant. The ground is relevant. See, there's a lot of information that it doesn't give that you kind of have to fill in the blanks. The size of the plane is irrelevant? Well, no, the size of the plane is not remotely irrelevant. Although in this question, it actually technically is irrelevant. The plane could weigh half a pound. It could be a tiny RC plane. Um, and the truth is too, like I said there's an, in the original video, there's another thing that could eventually cause takeoff. If you have the conveyor belt and the wheels matching speed and they're allowed to approach infinity, the sheer air pressure generated by the conveyor belt's surface imperfections blasting through the atmosphere, the, just the amount of wind that gets pushed will eventually be so much that it lifts the plane off if it's allowed to approach infinity speed. This is actually how hard drive heads work. The platter spins around at say 7200 RPM, 5400 RPM, some of them 10 or 15,000 RPM. But they spin around and the hard drive heads are on these tiny little metal things. They go whoop and they're right underneath that spinning surface. The surface is spinning and the head design on the arm, they're designed such that the spin of the platters 
creates enough air pressure just from the platters going through the wind, the, um, the gases inside, that it lifts the head a tiny, tiny bit. We're talking measured in microns above the surface of the platter so they're not scraping together. So it technically is floating on a cushion of air. Same thing could happen with the plane if the conveyor is allowed to approach infinity. This is the only situation I can think of where you could inject some real physics and say, yes, the plane would take off. He could have done that. I mean, and I'm willing to concede that, that this hypothetical, if the conveyor is allowed to approach infinity, it will actually create enough air pressure just from air blasting off the belt to cause the airplane to lift up off of it. Yeah, that is entirely possible as you approach infinity. And so, yeah, the plane could eventually take off. Was I wrong? Not really. Um, it doesn't say anything about how fast the conveyor belt's allowed to go. So, yeah. And this, this guy just doesn't get it. Like, he, he even admits they just spin. The wheels are not attached to the thrust. They just spin. What he's not getting is that if the wheels are not... Or if they're in contact with, if there's force exerted upon from the weight of the plane and they're in contact with the conveyor belt in any way, the plane is not allowed to move forward, ergo it can't create lift. End of story. The propeller pulls the aircraft through the air, but the aircraft is on the ground. It's not in the air yet. The aircraft pulls its wings with it. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. The wings moving over the air at speed produces lift. That's not how it works. You, you, you said something that sounds right, but it's actually the opposite expression of what's correct. The wings moving over the air don't produce the lift. The air moving over and under the wings produces the lift. The air goes... I don't, I'm not going to explain how airfoils work. You need to look it up. You need to do your research. It's called airfoil. Look at how airfoils work. It creates high and low pressure, and the low pressure is where the high pressure pushes towards. That's, just, that's how an airfoil works. But no, it's not the wings moving over the air producing the lift. It's the air that hits the wings that produces the lift. And I know six dozen... Or six of one half dozen of the other, right? You're saying the same thing backwards. No. No, because it's not the wind acting on the wings acting on the air. It's the air acting on the wings. This could be another fundamental misconception. The the plane pushes forward, yes, but it ultimately is the air that it's coming in contact with that does the lifting of those wings. The wings moving over the air produces lift. Well, the problem is the wings aren't moving because the plane's not moving. The only result of the conveyor belt is that the wheels faster as the ground moves backwards faster. Yes, but if the plane is able to move forward before it has taken off, as in disconnected from the ground, if the plane is allowed to move forward, it's violated the constraint that the wheels and conveyor must match speeds perfectly. And I even said such... The constraint is that the wheels cannot rotate faster than the conveyor, and the plane is grounded. Are you dense? Now, I had some other choice words for them that were four-letter words, but YouTube likes to delete that stuff, so I decided not to do that. Then this guy gets it. Swimming doesn't require upward lift provided by forward movement. So he's shooting down the swimming thing. An F-18 hooked in for launch off a carrier is not providing an upward force, even if its afterburners are at full blast. This is true. It gets upward lift from physically moving forward, hence the full burn and propelled launch. Yeah, they're really just trying to get up to speed more quickly, which is why they fire the engines up at max, then let the thing go, so that there is a shorter acceleration curve to get up to speed to fly by itself. If these conveyors actually worked, military on the planet wouldn't be investing billions of dollars in launch systems or STOL, short takeoff and landing aircraft. And that's the thing, it's not a helicopter, it's an airplane. It has no way to go up. All right, you cannot match the conveyor speed with the converted RPM. Yes, this is true in the real world, but in the hypothetical, we are required to consider that that is possible. Look, I can't get the replies to load. What am I gonna do? We're gonna have to... Uh Reload the comments, I think. Uh-oh. 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 Is my internet broken? Oh, this... 
Oh, this is the oh, this just figures. Oh, are you kidding me? Is my internet is my internet down? I, obviously, this isn't live. I'm recording this with OBS and my camera, but is my internet broken? Or is it, is it YouTube being dumb? Oh my god. No, my internet is working. YouTube's just stupid. Oh, let's refresh the page. Maybe a refresh of the page? Uh, I deleted all that crap. Sorry. Uh, technical difficulties, people. Alright, let's go back down here and try again. You cannot match the conveyor speed with the converted RPM the wheels would be at when traveling the same opposite speed. Oh my god, this is hard to read. The plane will always move the same amount of air and move forward. See, this guy just doesn't understand the constraint. The constraint requires that it can't move forward. It, it's not about whether or not the plane has a lot of thrust, ergo it would move forward because the conveyor belt, the force of the conveyor belt can't resist the thrust. That's not what it's about. It's not, the conveyor belt's force is irrelevant. The constraint is that the wheels can't exceed the speed of the conveyor belt. That's the constraint. That is what ties it in place. It has nothing to do with the belt force. The plane will move forward whether it's, yeah, if it moves forward, it violates the constraint. Under the constraint, the plane's not allowed to move forward. It would have to be strictly hypothetical. Yeah, absolutely right. And he says, yeah, makes sense. In the real world, it would take off. One way or the other, it would eventually take off. But in the hypothetical, it wouldn't. Now, this guy, Lack770, you remember him from that other comment? Yep, let's bust his butt. This is a masterclass in Dunning-Kruger cringe. Oh, aren't you just a great troll, dude? Are you just a great little troll? Oh, yeah, Dunning-Kruger. I'm so smart. I can use the words Dunning-Kruger. I just got off of Reddit. You fucking loser. All your points are wrong and irrelevant, and I have a big dick. You fundamentally misunderstand practically everything about this question. Your assumptions are wrong. Your conclusions are wrong. I don't have any evidence. Oh, he didn't say that. But, oh, the Mythbusters didn't do it wrong. Yes, they did because it's not possible to do it. So there's no way for them to do it right. The way that they did it was wrong anyway, but there's no way for them to do it right. You just, oh, here we go. You just have some contrarian conspiracy theorist issue. What the f Conspiracy theorist? Are you looking at my other videos? Are you, are you, are you a really far leftoid? And, and you don't like the fact that I might disagree on a few things because I'm libertarian and not a psychotic leftist weirdo? Is that, is that where this comes from, this contrarian conspiracy theorist accusation? Because that's really weird. What conspiracy is going on with this conveyor? Oh my god, I've just, I've just uncovered the airplane conspiracy, the conveyor belt conspiracy. Why is the government hiding conveyor belt technology from our airline industry? We could be saving so much money. Greta Thunberg could be taking off vertically if we just had these perfect conveyor belts. It's a conspiracy between the governments and the large corporations. And you're just the drive-by media. <laughs> According to LAC 770. And your brain is doing backflips. No, dude. No. See, the problem is I actually can read a technical question and take it exactly at its word. You say what you mean. If a question asks something... You take it as written. Ooh. Ooh, my neck is cracking. A question as written. The problem is you apparently didn't take algebra and get a single one of those word problems that introduces irrelevant information or you have to read in a specific way. Here, here's a very interesting one. It's sort of related. I was in AP Chemistry in high school and at the end of a test where we were supposed to write out the actual chemical compositions, the molecules, in particular, um, that we were going over prefixes and such. Um, and, you know, we, with, uh, like, chlorate and sulfate and such, and we had the various, um, you know, like, perchlorate or hypochlorite or whatever, we had to write out the chemical structures. And what happened is... You know, iodine is a chemical. I don't want to bore you with chemistry, but iodine is a chemical. 
And if you had an acid that had iodine in there, it would be an something iodic acid, like like I don't know if it's possible hypoiodic acid. Um, that's that's dumb. It wouldn't exist, would it? Um, but the problem was that we are supposed to write these compositions, and at the end of the test, and it threw me off for a while too before I realized that I was misreading. Um, one of the guys walks up, hands his paper to the chemistry teacher, and says, "Hey, man, you gotta you gotta tell us one day what periodic acid is." Periodic acid. And the chemistry teacher looks at him for a second and says, per iodic acid. And the guy's face almost fell off. And he goes, ah. Per iodic acid is it's like what? IO4? I can't remember. HIO4. Uh, per iodic acid. Not periodic acid. You read it as written, but this is the thing. You have to read carefully. You have to understand. I mean, you're bringing in context, of course. It's chemistry, but periodic doesn't make sense at all. So maybe that wasn't entirely relevant. I don't know, but I'm going to leave it in the video anyway because it's a fun story. Um, this guy doesn't understand how to read a technical situation exactly as written. Your brain is doing backflips to convince you that you're smarter than you are. No, I read the constraint, and once I saw that constraint, the other information becomes irrelevant. The information that you're adding just from your own existing body of knowledge is irrelevant because the constraint prevents the plane from ever taking off. Except, as I said, in very limited, absurdist scenarios where the conveyor belt can approach infinity speed, where the conveyor belt's on a giant truck that's driving really fast, some sort of really wacky situation that is not mentioned in the hypothetical and is perhaps even more ridiculous than the idea of a conveyor belt that can hold a 747 on, on the back of a truck. Whew. Yeah, so LAC 770, you're a stupid, stupid individual. Oh God, this is doing it again. I'm trying to see if this GE90 man, because I'm going to ban him if he hasn't responded to me, but YouTube keeps hosing my stuff. So, it's gonna be really hard. What is all this other garbage it keeps recommending to me? Yeah, here we go. So the last one, GE90 man. Yikes, man, you have no idea what you're talking about. This is coming from an aerospace engineer and pilot, neither of which it seems like you are. Now that's not the original message here. First of all, aerospace engineer and pilot. How did you end up being both of those? That Both of those require very different training to get to. <coughs> but he edited it to add some stuff to that. Oh, he edited this one too. Yeah, aerospace engineer. Appeal to authority logical fallacy. Your credentials are irrelevant. It doesn't matter how credentialed you are, you can still read a question wrong, clearly. Read the question as written. The constraint prevents a plane from moving forward. So, aerospace engineer, please explain how the plane takes off. It's not allowed to move forward on the ground and isn't at all capable of VTOL, which is vertical takeoff and landing. Because even short takeoff and landing is not involved if it's not allowed to move forward. It has to be vertical, which basically means it's a helicopter. The website in your description, and if you go to my original video here, there is a website in the description that does a bad job because it also read the question a little wrong. Explains exactly why the plane still takes off. Well, no, the constraint says it can't. And if you don't believe it, I won't argue with you. That's a good choice. That's generally a good choice because I'm right and you're wrong. As a wise man once said, never argue with stupid people. They will drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. Well, yeah, maybe I should stop arguing with you. Have a good one. So he thinks he's just going to walk away and not answer my direct question. How does the fucking plane take off? Come on, GE90 man, how does it take off? You didn't answer a direct question. Where's the lift come from? And I promised 40 minutes ago I would delete his comments and ban him if he did not answer. So now we are going to delete his comments and ban him. <coughs> so... Goodbye, 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 and 
fuck you goodbye. Answer the question or go away. This is why I ban people from my channel. This is why I delete some comments. Because dumbasses like that will show up, directly challenge me, talk about how large their penis is in the aerospace industry. I am an expert in X, Y, and Z fields, therefore whatever I say is always right. But they won't answer a simple question. Oh, I'm going to tell you that you're wrong, but I'm not going to refute anything because I'm better than you. And that's why you get banned. That's why this is what happens to you. This is how I feel about that. Aerospace engineer. Yeah. This is the dumb shit that I have to put up with. Thanks for joining me. I mean, it gets worse. You go to some of my videos, it gets a lot worse, especially the stupid political takes where I'm really just goofing off and being like, ah, I want to say something in the moment. And people get really snippy. But yeah, this video brought out all the stupid. And here's the thing. I don't blame you if you read it and you come to the wrong conclusions. The problem is this. I went to great depths in this video, great lengths, 15 minutes worth of lengths, to explain something that is very simple. The question has a constraint laid out that nullifies everything else and makes it so that the plane can never take off because of the way planes work. It's a very simple concept. It is not refutable except with absurdist scenarios, which nobody has ever tried to put out. Not a single person has presented a valid refutation. And I put this out and I welcome disagreement and you saw some of that disagreement here. And I try not to be too big of a dick to people who disagree, but don't do so saying that I'm a fucking moron. And the guy who did and then just bailed, you know, hit and run, we banned him live on air on this live recording that I'm gonna edit later. So yeah. That this is um, this is the caliber of horseshit that is on the internet today, and it it's scary because these people. This guy says he's an aerospace engineer and a pilot. This guy's responsible for making sure that your airplane doesn't crash into the side of a fucking mountain, and he can't read a question, a technical question, correctly. It is scary how stupid a lot of people are. And to be fair, you're not stupid if you didn't initially get it. You're not stupid if you think that I'm wrong. If you dislike my video just because you don't believe me and it doesn't really matter, whatever. That's fine. I don't care. Dislikes or engagement, keep it coming. You're not stupid for not really investing in it and not caring. You're not stupid for thinking the wrong thing. But once you're presented with this information that I have presented and you hold your position and I present you with this new information and you don't accept it, even though it is clearly correct, you're stupid. Sorry. That's just it. You're dumb. You're dumb. You will continue to be dumb until you see things my way. You know, and I've been wrong about things before, and I give these people an opportunity to prove me wrong. But they don't. They don't prove me wrong. They either talk about how many credentials they have and how smart they are, and then just don't argue, or they provide really, really bad arguments that I addressed in the video, which indicates they either didn't watch the video or they weren't listening. Yeah, so I guess maybe I shouldn't be arguing with stupid people. Mm. But it's fun. It's so much fun, and I get to make videos like this mocking them. And that's what makes it all worthwhile. And you know what? I'm, I'm sick right now. What the hell else am I going to do? I don't want to go be around other people and get them infected with the super AIDS. You know, I don't want people to hear my voice. Oh, shit. Well, too late for that. But no, I, I don't want to get other people infected, so I'm not hanging out around people. I can't really go out and do a bunch of things. I'm avoiding the store. I'm avoiding things because I'm ill. What else am I going to do but make fun of morons in the comments and maybe finish editing this one video that I'm almost done with? You know, this just that last guy, that GE whatever, swinging his 
big dick energy around about being an aerospace engineer. Oh, edited and a pilot. Yeah, everybody's an aerospace engineer and a pilot on the internet, dude. But that's just what inspired this whole thing. It's just so stupid. Oh, man. And I don't know. It's, it's pretty easy because I can predict what's going to happen. Someone's going to watch this video, this one right here, right now, and leave a comment. They're not going to watch this far. And they're going to leave a comment saying that, oh, I just, I'm butthurt because I'm mad. Oh, I got sour grapes or something. Oh, you're just upset. Now you're doubling down because you're just, you, you made this video because you're so butthurt, butt mad, upset. <laughs> no, dude, I made this video because you people are so stupid. Oh my God, these people are so stupid and I just want to laugh at them all and show how stupid these people are and make everybody that watches this video fear for their safety the next time they get in a plane and an aerospace engineer and pilot that can't read a question correctly is running the show. <sighs> Happy crashing, my friends. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. And as usual, down below, there's all kinds of links to other platforms I'm moving my stuff to because YouTube is, in, is a censorious hellhole shit pit. And go to my website, jodybruchon.com, to support me financially because why the fuck would you give me money for this? I really don't understand what's wrong with you. But hey, you know what? You give me some money, I'll buy some donuts and wine or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm actually kind of laying off that stuff right now because I'm a fat fuck. But hey, you give me money, I'll spend it on something. Actually, hey, hang on. I did spend some money on something. Someone sent me like a hundred dollars for something. And uh, so I blew, I don't know, 70, 80 bucks of it on this thing. It's a, it's a hot air rework station that I can't get out of the box properly. Well, maybe I shouldn't get it out of the box, but yeah, it's, it's a cheap Chinese, but well-reviewed hot air rework station that I can use to fix motherboards. Um, I know it's not the greatest thing in the world, but board repair, like Lewis Rossman, is something that um, I just haven't gotten into. It seemed like a bit of a pain, but I'm taking the plunge. This is where your money goes. If you give me money, I'm not spending it on hookers and blow, you know. I'm, I'm not necessarily even spending it on garbage McDonald's coffee. This is actually French pressed coffee in the cup I got at McDonald's this morning. I'm spending it on stuff like this, you know, and flux, so that I can do more interesting things. Um, and the other thing, I actually moved out of this room, but yeah, you know, the, the point is that I joke about how, why would you ever want to give me money? Maybe this isn't the best video to, to go on this little rant, <clears throat> especially when I'm coughing into the microphone like a sick bastard. But I joke about, like, why would you give me money to complain on the internet? Well, the thing is, you know, I like to make videos, but the repair videos, I haven't really seen much that was interesting to film. Ripping the backplate off of a computer these days, most of the backplates are just take out 8, 10, 12 screws and pry, and, the, and everything in the computer is available to you. It's almost pointless to even make a video for each individual model because almost every computer seems to have the same construction at this point. And there's not much that I can film that would be interesting. Um, I've already filmed so many models that are popular. So just the disassembly videos are kind of fading. Uh, I have a few that I need to edit and put out, but I'm running out of things to disassemble that aren't just basically the same formula over and over and over again. That was my Gazing Cat Productions ringtone, by the way. I got an email. Um, but yeah, I, I go in here and I try to, you know, give you guys some more information, um, give you more videos about repair, you know, stuff that's not political or dumb hypothetical questions. And the financial contributions do actually really help with that. It gives me the funds that I need to buy stuff like a hot air rework station so I can start doing some more exploratory surgery, if you will. Uh, have a little bit more fun. Do some more interesting things. I've actually been meaning to buy one for years, but the thing is that board repair is not easy to get into, especially... Uh, I mean, it, it's, just, it's just not easy. You do need a lot more equipment than what I have. I don't have the proper equipment, but at least with this thing, I can start. 
Um, I mean, that's, that's basically it. You know, it opens up more opportunities for me to do more things and thus film more things and thus share more things with you. So the whole money thing, the subscribe star, PayPal, coffee, flatter, all of those, they actually do go towards making more content for this channel for you guys to look at. Um, oh yeah, another thing that I spent money on recently that I probably shouldn't have is this. This thing right here. This is a Sigma SD Quattro and an 18 to 35 lens and it takes amazing pictures and I have taken some amazing pictures which you can find on my website, or at least some of them. I've been doing a lot of panoramas of interesting places and I've been posting more of them. And, you know, as my equipment improves, as, you know, I gain capability and the ability to produce better things, you will see more and better things come out of me. Um, I actually have a lot of coding stuff. Not coding necessarily, but um, I, I archive about 300 YouTube channels, give or take. And I have a bunch of shell scripts I've written to manage that archive. Just last night, actually, I wrote one that um, it goes through and it deletes both a full channel that I've archived that I've decided I don't want to archive anymore and that I'm going to remove and strips out the IDs from your usual y, you know, YouTube DL, YT, DLP, whatever archive file, which in the case of mine is like 200,000 lines or something. Uh, but it strips out the lines that correspond to the videos from the channel you're nuking from your archive. So I've got all these tools I'd like to share, write articles about, make videos about. Um, at, at this point, the only thing that's really stopping me is I need to get everything in here rearranged first um, because that's a bit higher priority. Once I've gotten everything nice and cleaned up and organized and sorted, video bonanza. Uh, anyway... <laughs> You know what? Thanks again for watching, and uh, I really appreciate all of your support. And I appreciate the people who argue with me in the comments in a civil way. It's really nice to see, and I like the perspectives. And as, as long as you're respectful, I'm going to be respectful back. But if I start smelling any kind of bad trolling effort or a bad faith sort of approach, you're gone. And that's just it. And I don't feel like that's unfair for me to refuse to deal with people that are just being dicks. Anyway, what is all this weird stuff? No, I don't want to read about that. Why am I... Okay. Alright, YouTube's messing with me. I'm sick. I need to go. Send me money or something. And please, go look at my uh, personal webpage, jodybruchon.com. Go to the photography and check out some of my panoramas. They're pretty sweet. Also, if you're interested, I am actually willing to sell products with those pictures on them. Like if you would like a humongous canvas print of one of my panoramas, I would be more than happy to buy one and send it to you in exchange for some money. Uh, just let me know. Thanks. Take care. <laughs>